Why it's extremely important to be sensitive to people locked in abuse cycles is that these are people who often can retroactively look at patterns in their own life and entertain deep despair and confusion. You know, at the conclusion of these relationships, they're often catapulted into utter darkness because this last relationship occurred to be the salvation that they sought that they have had a history of usury and and being taken advantage of. And then now they met somebody. And, you know, the problem with simply just telling people, well, well, you know, you made bad choices. You know, you couldn't you see that is because no, they couldn't. You see that the people that end up in relationships with narcissists often had those types of people as parents. And these behavior patterns like people pleasing are survival necessities for children that are actually patternized flawlessly and so I often tell people look as much as we tend to think of people that are in abuse cycles as people that were deeply traumatized through abuse what it really comes down to is that as imperfect as they feel they might be the truth of the matter is that they were perfect for a particular environment that people pleasing is a way of dissociating from the reality of the experience of the parents in order to be able to coexist, be able to experience some uh, emotional normalcy. Rather than being persistently in fear, the child can maintain an idealized view of their parents and attempt to mitigate the abuse through people-pleasing behavioral strategies, including internalization of abuse like self-blame, Self-blame is integral because narcissistic parents never take responsibility for abuse. It's going to be framed as discipline or punishment. You know, why do people pleasers have difficulty saying no? They're profoundly inhibited in saying no because saying no as a child could get them hurt badly or punished. That they had to be almost unanimously agreeable with the behavior of the parents as a way to arrest the ongoing conflicts you know imagining themselves as somehow not good enough having something to do with the behavior of others is what you also see in adulthood and so you know the development of human personality is a very profound evolutionary advantage by patternizing emotion thoughts behavioral responses to an an external world that maybe 10,000 years ago the way we would relate to our parents in a more communal environment those behaviors were more rudimentary. Society was way less complicated. And so as you learn to coexist with your ooga duga ooga duga mom and dad, you know, the way you learn to coexist with them would be more closely, you know, matched to, you know, society in general, right? But now in 2023, you know, the the development of our societies, the development of our relationship dynamics, the removal of a more communal tribal experience to one of isolation within the confines of homes where, you know, there is no real accountability for parents and the privacy in terms of how they treat people or no more of a communal experience of rearing and raising children, you know, children's behavior patterns will then be compensatory towards that environment within the home that will not really match the outside world. And so when you develop adaptive psychological strategies to survive that environment, what happens is that those patternized experiences become profound emotional boundaries that encase the thought process of a human being, that cause them to fear certain outcomes, that cause them to even avoid imagining things outside the boundaries of these patterns because of the consequences that would be preemptively perceived. Like a people pleaser can experience intense anxiety and fear just by being asked to buy Girl Scout cookies. You know, and so it's not so much that they don't understand things, it's just that reality is patternized in our interpretation based on an existing way of being. You know, that these personalities that we develop are like blades of a Swiss army knife that are meant to give us patternized ways of being that are compensatory towards 
original moments of trauma or failures, children, that that is a universal re- re- reality is that so-called negative emotions and these things we called insecurities are actually necessary emotional dynamics that are catalysts to compel these behaviors as to fix the outside world, as to mitigate things that cause stress, as to mitigate things that increase the likelihood of failure or I- increase the likelihood of conflict. And so the adaptive strategies of the personality also come along with interpretations of circumstance that perpetuate into adulthood. And so people's decision making, their thought process and their responses and reactions to the outside world are not something that they can control. You know, that that being triggered, you call it, right? It's involuntary. And, and so when you're living as an adult and you have developed as a people pleaser, you had abuse in your childhood, it's not that you're just traumatized. It's, it's more that the boundaries around your choices and decisions are profoundly emotional in a way that it's almost like when you see a cow being brought to slaughter, it's like it's being cattle prodded and then it has these railings. Well, in the human experience, those railings are invisible and the emotional reactions are projected onto reality and the imagination is influenced by anticipation, reactions and others that I'm afraid to say no. And I imagine it would make someone mad. I imagine it might cause abandonment. It might cause them to not like me because that's what they've already experienced. And so it's like if you got stung by a bee, you're going to be afraid of getting stung again and that's the way the human memory is used to enable us to have a better chance of making more rapid decisions when our consciousness could be such a vast a vast expanse that instead of imagining a million different reactions or outcomes in one decision it gets patternized to almost multiple choice and so while we experience free will and we experience freedom the truth of the matter is our experience of freedom is locked within the boundaries of a percepted reality that is constituted within the boundaries of motions that have previously been associated with these original experiences in childhood that gave rise to these seemingly necessary ways of responding to life that we use as a personality. And so that is the trouble and the challenge and just simply telling people that they're making mistakes is they often know that retroactively, that outside of that environment, outside of the stressors, outside of the triggers, those people can have great despair. That even having had those experiences will contribute to the underlying emotions that drive them in the relationships. Like if they were compelled to try to be good enough for their partner in order to keep that person happy, to hold the relationship together, or to avoid abuse or disappointing people after the relationship, they will look at what happened to them and it will even reinforce those underlying emotions or things or notions of self. Like I'm not good enough. I'm broken. There's something wrong with me. I'm unlovable. And so we got to take great care in terms of the way that we approach people who have been in these patterns. And that's why, you know, I share in a way that sometimes may look like victim blaming, but it's not. I'm really about looking at the origins of these personalities, the origins of these experiences, and talking about them in a way that people can start to remove some of the false notions of self, that you truly were not less than human. You were truly never worthless. You're truly not unlovable. You're truly never not good enough. That isn't why it happened to you. That's why it happened in the mind of the child. When the child had something happen and thought to themselves, I'm not good enough. My mom doesn't love me because I'm not being enough. How I fix that is by being perfect. That becomes a vicious circle. And there is a way to escape that. But you have to go back to the moment. You have to see the dynamics. You have to understand the discrepancy between what actually took place in your life and what your little child mind thought about themselves. And those thoughts of self became defining, became things to overcome later in life, perpetually. And that's why I talk in the way I do.